Hello, I'm Doug Beaumont. Welcome to my channel. It's about philosophy of religion, apologetics, and theology. Today I want to talk to you about a verse in scripture that could be a lot of trouble for Protestantism. The verse I'm talking about is James 2.24. Now, before you click off, I know that many of you watching this will probably say, oh, I already know about this one, and I know how to get out of the Catholic problem with it. But stick around, because I'm trying to take a little bit of a different angle here to try to show the problem with this verse from the Catholic, or even just a logical, point of view. And it's a problem that transcends the Protestant's ability to theologize or interpret their way out of it. In case you're not familiar with the verse, James 2.24 says this, You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. Now the problem that this verse raises for Protestantism is that the Reformation was theologically founded on two major columns, if you will, sola scriptura and sola fide which is Latin for scripture alone and faith alone. Now in both cases, the sola is in reference to something else that Protestants believe Catholics bring to the table that they shouldn't. So sola scriptura is saying that the Bible, scripture alone, is the ultimate authority for faith and practice for a Christian. So sola scriptura is really supposed to be against the Catholic view that religious tradition should be brought in as well. Sola fide, on the other hand, means faith alone, and it says that justification, our salvation, is through faith alone as opposed to any good works. So you probably see the problem. Protestantism was literally founded on the idea that we are justified by faith alone apart from works, and that is a direct verbal contradiction to James 2.24, which comes from scripture, which is supposed to be the ultimate authority in matters of faith and practice. Now, if you've watched my other videos or seen me on somebody else's channel, you know that I was an evangelical for about 20 years. In fact, I taught at an evangelical seminary for 10 of those years. So I am well aware of how Protestants get around this problem with James 2.24. The most popular way that I saw was to say that this justification is not talking about the salvation kind of justification, but another kind, showing that you are saved, showing that you have faith, by doing good works. And in that way, they're able to hang on to sola fide and still affirm a Bible verse that directly seems to contradict it. Now, that's not the only way Protestants have of getting out of that problem. Uh, justification itself is still a pretty major issue within Protestantism. In fact, when this book came out, Five Views on Justification, they had to get three different Protestants just to represent some of the different views that are out there. Further, there are Catholic scholars that don't necessarily disagree with that understanding of James 2.24, but overall, that's really not the main issue. I can grant that there are theological or hermeneutical ways to get around what seems to be an obvious verbal contradiction with scripture. I did it myself for many years. But as a Catholic, what I've noticed is that this causes a much bigger problem for Protestants than many of them seem to realize. And that is because so many Protestants rely on proof texts, scriptures that they pull out to say, see, I'm right about what I'm saying. And many times they will consider themselves to be the biblical Christians because they are able to do that, often in contrast to Catholics who, admittedly, don't often know their Bibles as well as their Protestant brethren. Now, a big part of the reason is that Catholics aren't as dependent on scriptural proof texts for what they believe. But another one is simply that they don't spend a whole lot of time trying to argue with Protestants, and so they don't necessarily have the proof text verses in mind. And a big part of that is because many Catholics realize that we are deriving some, or quite a bit sometimes, of our theology from church tradition. But here's the thing. Protestants are doing it too, they just don't like to admit it. I've already given you one example of this. You have James 2.24, which literally contradicts the founding principle of Protestantism. And James 2.24 is not the only example I can give. 1 Peter 3.21 says that baptism now saves you. 
That verse contradicts the founding principle of the Baptist movement. The Anabaptist movement began when certain people began re-baptizing those who had been baptized in infancy because they didn't believe that baptism as a sacrament was salvific. And this despite the fact that there is a Bible verse that says baptism now saves you. Or consider John 6, 54. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. Jesus goes on to say that if you don't eat his flesh and drink his blood, you don't have life in you. And yet most Protestant groups and all Baptists and Evangelicals deny that we in any way actually consume Jesus' flesh and drink his blood. So what's interesting here is that you have the Catholic Church that supposedly is the unbiblical kind of Christian, and yet we have verses that specifically state exactly what we believe about salvation. Now again, I'm not saying that Protestants haven't found ways to theologize their way around what seem to be fairly clear scriptures. But what many of them don't realize is that once you do that, you're not simply relying on scripture. You're relying on an interpretation of scripture. And therefore, it is really your particular tradition that is guiding the authority of those passages and not the passages themselves. Now, this isn't the pot calling the kettle black. Catholics do the same thing. The difference is we acknowledge that that is what happens because that just is what occurs when you do biblical interpretation. However, imagine if some Protestant apologist happened upon a Bible verse that said, the Pope is not the successor of Peter, or Mary was not immaculately conceived, or nobody gets saved by the sacraments. If any of those kinds of verses actually existed in scripture, they would be being shouted from the rooftops by Protestant apologists. They'd be on t-shirts and bumper stickers and held up as signs at football games. But of course, none of those verses do exist. Sure, there are some verses that Protestants feel they have interpreted better than Catholics and that put Catholicism in a bad light, but they've got nothing like James 2.24, 1 Peter 3.21, or John 6.54. And I am pretty sure that if they did, and the Catholics figured out a way to interpret their way around them to make them still look correct, Catholics would be the laughingstock of the biblical interpretation Protestant world. Because if a direct verbal contradiction of scripture doesn't cause your system a huge problem, then the system is the problem. If you submit sola fide to sola scriptura, it seems like you ought to be getting rid of it. Either that, or you can keep sola fide and get rid of sola scriptura and simply admit that you're letting your religious traditions guide your beliefs and not merely what scripture says. But the Protestant has to have both because that is what Protestantism is. This is what Protestantism was born of. And that's not to mention the groups that came along later, like the Anabaptists and other groups that deny other parts of Catholic teaching, even though the Bible clearly states exactly what the Catholic Church teaches. And yet, it's the Catholic Church that is constantly being attacked by those very groups for not being biblical. All right, I hope this video has been helpful to you. If it has, would you mind giving it a like? And if you are not subscribed to Douglas Beaumont, you can click that red button and click the bell if you want to know the next time videos come out. I look forward to your comments and some good discussion. Keep it friendly, keep it on point or it's bye-bye comments. Until next time, I'm Doug. Thanks for watching.